Hey friends, Stevie B here. I want to share some thoughts with you about music licensing and the royalty free space. And it's a bit of a mixed bag of perspectives. Overall, I feel like I'm a very positive and optimistic person. And my aim here on YouTube has always been to uh, inspire and encourage people. However, I also think that it's really important to inject some realism uh, into the discussion surrounding royalty-free music libraries uh, and their sustainability, both now and in the future. I think it's an important conversation to have and probably one that's overdue on this channel. I've been having a lot of discussions lately with folks who are just uh, starting their journey in music licensing. Um, they're you know, usually eager to find out how to monetize their creative work in some way. Uh, and the common challenge that they face is like where to begin. It's a question I get all the time. Many of them have a substantial body of work and, and or some of them are just working on a few tracks that they're really stoked about. And um, they want to understand how they can do more with them other than just, you know, upload them to Spotify where uh, they'll probably go unnoticed. And that's really the beauty of music licensing is that there's this utility aspect to it that's really exciting. Uh, knowing that someone can use your music uh, for their project is exciting and, and making money from that exchange is even more exciting. Not surprisingly, many people associate me with stock music because that's where my own journey uh, started. I initially began uh, by uploading music to Audio Jungle and I started you know, making some modest income there a few hundred bucks here and there, you know, and that happened pretty quickly. Uh, and that got me really excited back when it happened. And I decided to, you know, create a, a YouTube video about it, uh, which kind of catapulted my channel. And those early videos about Audio Jungle, they still get views. Uh, and that really kind of marked the beginning of my, uh, of my YouTube journey. Eventually, uh, you know, I kind of branched out. Uh, I ventured into working with different libraries and, uh, you know, at some point I found success on Motion Array, uh, which was a significant turning point for me. And that eventually paved the way for uh, success with Artlist as well. The interesting thing about the, the stock music and royalty free uh, marketplace is that it's always evolving. And, the, you know, in the four years or so, I think it's been four years since I started this channel. Um, in that four years, there's been so many big changes. Audio Jungle has closed its doors to new authors. Uh, selling on Pond5 has become increasingly difficult. Uh, they also, you know, uh, reduced their payments to the authors. I think that happened like quite a while back. Uh, I rarely hear from people who are making any kind of meaningful uh, income on sites like, uh, you know, there's lots of these kinds of sites like 123RF, Dreams Time. These are often like really super saturated libraries um, uh, that have been around for years. And, you know, I'm not sure if uh, they're always like worth the trouble, to be honest. It's not to say that there aren't folks who are making money on those libraries, uh, but a lot of them have been doing it for a long time. And uh, often they have like huge catalogs, like I'm talking like thousands of tracks and are, you know, still showing up in a lot of the searches just because they have um, such an enormous volume uh, of music on the on the platform already. So the reason that I'm sharing this with you is because, like I said, I, I often have people uh, reaching out to me asking for advice on like how to kickstart their journey in the world of music licensing. And when they come to me, I usually have to take some time to understand their goals and to better understand uh, what level they're at uh, as a music producer. If their primary aim is just to simply, you know, get into the mindset of uploading music to and working with a music library and gain a sense of what that entails, uh, especially if they're relatively new to music production, I often suggest that Pond5 is a, kind of a safe space and a, and a good training ground because even though it's you know pretty difficult to uh, make sales there, the submission process is very straightforward. Uh, they accept almost everything and you get a sense for like writing descriptions and metadata uh, for your tracks and you can upload alternate edits and all that kind of thing. And if you're uploading you know good music and it's useful for for the for the user base, uh, then you can potentially earn some money if you make some sales. I always remind myself of where I began my own journey. Uh, when I uploaded my first few tracks to Audio Jungle, I didn't have you know these big expectations of making uh, a fortune. I think my first sale was like for thirty dollars, which for which I received like fifty percent, and then there's the Invado cut. Uh, so I mean, yeah, the money itself uh, wasn't the main highlight. What truly mattered was 
um, the validation and uh, you know the reinforcement that my music was valuable to someone. That first sale served as a source of motivation and excitement for me uh, as it signified that my music was good enough uh, for someone to invest in and use in their project. That psychological boost was crucial at the time, it was really important for me. And I believe that many individuals uh, entering this space are at a similar stage. Uh, they're trying to gauge whether their music can be a valuable asset uh, in the world of media. So in that context, I find myself uh, reliving my early experiences and trying to understand whether, you know, these folks that I'm talking to, whether their uh, motivation is driven uh, by a desire for substantial earnings or a genuine interest in making their music serve a purpose beyond just uh, personal creativity. Now, other times I have discussions with folks who are much more advanced uh, with their production skills and don't necessarily see themselves as, um, you know, endeavoring to be a, a media composer. They might think of themselves more as artists, you know, and they, they may have an existing body of work and are just looking for uh, licensing opportunities uh, for their music. And it's essential to recognize that, like, not all music, especially artist-driven compositions, uh, fit well within the stock music library space, like, you know, on libraries like Pond5. Artist-driven music would probably find a more suitable home on a platform like Artlist, which caters to artists and their unique material. But it all circles back to the question of, like, where to begin this journey. And, and the answer really depends on a lot of factors, uh, such as your level of production expertise, uh, the type of music that you want to create, and you know what you're just generally comfortable with doing. Many of the people that I'm speaking to uh, are interested in exploring more competitive opportunities, like right off the bat, uh, such as breaking into like TV and production music libraries, for example, or uh, aiming to collaborate with music supervisors. And these avenues are are notably more challenging, but uh, can have huge payoffs. Over the years, I've learned that my own income from music licensing is a result of working with multiple libraries and building relationships with uh, different publishers and production companies. Most people I've encountered in the music licensing space also have multiple income streams and engage in all sorts of different projects. This has certainly been my experience and you know I'm always on the lookout for new opportunities. It's crucial to consider this because I want to be clear that uh, you know while I've shared videos in the past about earning you know a substantial income from uh, say motion array or artlist, um, you have to also consider the bigger picture. Those titles of some of those, you know, older videos are, they're kind of sexy and like they're a bit clickbaity, I guess, but I don't want to give the impression uh, that this is easy to pull off. None of this is easy. Uh, nothing is easy. And furthermore, you know, opportunities will come and go. As I'm recording this video, uh, Artlist, you know, remains a lucrative platform for me and I'm grateful for the consistent um, income and, and the opportunities that it provides for me. However, you know, I understand that uh, even Artlist will have its ups and downs, uh, and I anticipate these changes. Uh, nothing lasts forever. When a great opportunity comes along, uh, you make the most of it, and then adapt when it evolves or it diminishes. So I want to emphasize that I've never claimed uh, succeeding in, in uh, licensing or any artistic uh, endeavor is easy. I work, you know, way harder and longer now than I ever did uh, when I had like a nine to five job. Uh, and my success in music licensing has really been a result of my dedication and willingness to put in the effort. Truth is, uh, I'm not super talented. Uh, I'm mediocre, uh, actually. And there's many people out there who are uh, far more talented and, and successful than I am. Um, and success in music, I think more often than not, isn't necessarily about talent. Uh, it's about how hard you're willing to work and the level of commitment and perseverance uh, that you put in plays a huge role in defining uh, your success in, in the music biz. So with all that being said, if you're just approaching uh, the licensing game, I'd advise against approaching it solely as a means to quickly turn it into like a money-making machine. It's not the right mindset to start with, in my opinion. Instead, I'd suggest embracing a relationship building perspective. It's about being in the right places, knowing the right people uh, and collaborating with the right people. And the reality is a significant part of this journey involves dealing with rejection and working uh, without immediate substantial financial returns. Like when it comes to getting hired for like production work, uh, which I'm doing a lot more of these days, uh, you might find yourself working 
for free initially, you know, to build your online portfolio or uh, to create uh, a portfolio on your website, for instance. When I first got started in licensing, I didn't expect it to become a highly profitable business within a, a short time frame. Uh, it was something that I pursued on the side. Uh, while working a day job. And when I joined Audio Jungle, I didn't expect to get rich there either. It was an experiment um, that opened the doors to explore other avenues. And fast forward to today, I've got lots of great relationships with various different professionals who uh, help get my music onto television and films and, uh, uh, you know, YouTube videos and all sorts of great content. And, you know, none of this happened overnight. So I would embrace the idea that it's primarily a relationship building endeavor in the beginning, and that will pay off over the long term. I do worry sometimes that, you know, some folks get into this game with misguided uh, motivations or just unsustainable expectations. Uh, if you enter this field, uh, you know, taking aim at stock music libraries primarily, uh, thinking that you're going to crank out just like tons and tons of tracks uh, and rapidly turn it into like a $500 to $1,000 a month passive income machine. I, I don't know. I think you got to check yourself because the key is, is not to put all of your eggs in one basket. There are a lot of opportunities out there and everyone who has found success in music licensing um, has followed their own unique path. I know a lot of folks who have like really great connections with like a few, uh, you know, TV and production music libraries, and they're collecting like a lot of uh, back end royalties from from all these placements that have accumulated over the years. For me personally, it started off in the royalty free space, and you know, I got a lot of great momentum on um, libraries like Artlist and Motion Array, which eventually expanded into multiple different income streams. Like, you know, I currently have like 10 different income streams now, and I'm always on the lookout for new ones. <laughs> so just remember that you got to stay flexible and you need to be able to adapt to changing circumstances uh, and just keep exploring what works best for you. Uh, what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for someone else. I think that you do have to be uh, you know, super patient and don't get like ultra fixated on achieving a specific income milestone in a predetermined time frame. So those are just a few thoughts I wanted to share in this video today. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions on this topic. Please uh, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. In conclusion, I'm, I'm not trying to make the case that stock music libraries are good or bad or that you should go in any one uh, specific direction. Everyone's situation is sort of unique. In the music industry, there's just so many different opportunities and uh, you need to be open-minded and flexible. So for those of you who have watched my older videos about Motion Array uh, and Audio Jungle, uh, just please keep in mind that, that you know things are changing all the time. Uh, even Motion Array isn't the same library that it was like a year ago. And while I'm still making money on Motion Array, uh, the, my income there hasn't been as great as it was last year. And that's partly because I've I uh, haven't been uploading there very, very much, and I'm just concentrating on a lot of different projects at the moment. You certainly still can have like, you know, a, a hit there, so to speak, uh, and earn a significant amount uh, in one month, uh, especially with like the, a staff pick and, and like, a you know, a lot of downloads. Uh, and that could also lead to, uh, you know, income through content ID. And these are all topics that I've, you know, talked about at length um, in previous videos. But ultimately, I just want to, you know, ensure that people have realistic expectations and, and stay really open minded uh, and are always looking for new opportunities. And it's so important to do that. It's, it's something that I'll never stop doing. So yeah, no library, you know, remains amazing forever. Unfortunately, even, uh, you know, Audio Jungle obviously had its glory days and the, the uh, superstar music authors who were once selling thousands of tracks, uh, you know, every month there. I mean, that is kind of like, that's like a bygone era, you know, it's a thing of the past. And that change, you know, it, that all happened relatively quickly, you know, like in the span of years, a few years, uh, which really illustrates how rapidly the industry is evolving. But ultimately, you know, where some opportunities dry up, uh, new ones come along. That's always the way it is. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Uh, please let me know, uh, you know, what you're thinking in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed the discussion, uh, don't forget to uh, give it a like and yeah, subscribe to the channel. Stay in touch. If you're interested in learning more about the music licensing business, about uh, royalties, about the music library business, uh, researching and applying to libraries, then I have a course for you that's completely 100% free. It's called Intro to Music Licensing, and that link is in uh, the description below. Go check that out. I'd love to have you in the Academy. Uh, there's a ton of other great course content in there as well, uh, primarily aimed at improving your production chops. So uh, go check that out, and I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye, guys.